What's today? Yep, I'm going to give you three guesses. And the first two don't count. It is distilling day. That's right. We're finally at that very end process, okay? Now, what I do not want to spend a lot of time on today uh, is the, the actual still itself, because I will use what I have available to me, besides all of the other stills we have laying around, I will not leave anything to chance. So I've got that fully automated Genio 50 liter still, and I'm going to use that. So I, this will not be a video about that still in particular, with the exception of you seeing me operate the darn thing. Uh, you know, that's just a given. Uh, but this thing is amazing. You know, it's got it's fully automated. It comes with its own filter. You know, it does it cleans itself. It does all that stuff. All right. But aside from that, this is our sweet potato vodka mash. And yes, it's all clarified. I was gone for the weekend, so I gave it a couple of extra days. That's not going to hurt it. Okay. Matter of fact, it it, it can only make it better. Um, it's so everything is settled out to the bottom. When I moved it this morning. I, it's really, really sensitive, so it's really, really light. Uh, I had a cloud that developed in the bottom here, and I'm going to have to let that settle out again, but I've got to move this because we are going to move next door into the man cave. Uh, and the reason we're going into the man cave um, is, well, first it's a little cleaner, yeah, and I got a lot more headroom because that Genio still is about close to about nine foot tall. So I've got to do that. I've got my parrot ready. Because, of course, we're going to track the proof as we do our production. And uh, I'm just so excited. I can't wait to get started. It'll take me a few minutes to get set up. But, uh, of course, you won't have to watch all of that. I'll, be, I'll have it over there and everything already done. I'll siphon all of this and I'll siphon the other uh, 6.8 gallon bucket that I have into the still in preparation and get this thing going. Now, a hey, good program note. Mike wrote in. Mike, thanks. Mike and I have been friends for years, and um, Mike wrote in, and, and, and uh, we, we both laugh. We were laughing out loud, okay? Uh, and the, remember, I used the term, or I was the, the explanation of what I use for finding agents. Clarifying, finding, same thing. Uh, and I was using Kisasol, one ounce, and three ounces of Chitosan or Chitosan, however you wanted to pronounce it. And Mike pointed out to me that, believe it or not, we looked it up, and the correct pronunciation of this is Kaitosan. So there you go. You call it Chitosan, Chitosan, or Kaitosan. Uh, I really don't care. <laughs> it's all the same thing. But the actual correct pronunciation is Kaitosan. So I have learned something new. Now, Mike also offered a tip that he has used uh, throughout his distilling uh, practice as well. It, and what he described was that he uses the whole number at the end of the gravity. I'll give you an example. If your starting gravity is like 1.050, uh, he says that that 50, 5 uh, represents, in general, the number of days he anticipates that it will take to ferment. And so, or another example, if it's 1.070, uh, the seven zero, the seven to him indicates the number of days he anticipates a full fermentation to complete. And I was like, that is really interesting. So I went back and looked at all of my records, and guess what? With and as a general rule of thumb, that has kind of held true. Uh, there are some ex exceptions, so please, uh, you, you could use that as a guide. So if your initial gravity is 1.040, you can expect it to ferment in about four days. All right? And that's just another indicator on the, the, the more fermentable sugars you have, meaning the higher gravity, uh, the longer it's going to take. Remember, it goes back to that analogy we used about the sliders on the plate. If I set you down with three sliders, you can gobble them up. If I set you down with 12 sliders on a plate, it takes you a little longer. Well, yeast react the same way. The more you give them, the longer it's going to take for them in order to get through all of that. So, therefore, more fermentable sugars equals more days of the fermentation process. So, Mike, thanks for sending that in. We really do appreciate that. And now I have shared that with everybody else. Let's get to distilling. You know it. Yep.
Um, we've got this thing all set up. Now all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go through uh, pure alcohol rectification, just 95% ABV, standard head collection. Uh, yes. No tails cut. I'm, I'm not going to cut, I'm not going to pull, you can tell this thing. Uh, I'm just not gonna pull tails. Use charcoal filtration? Yes. Uh, is there a batch in the boiler? It's going to ask you just so it doesn't fire up when it's dry. And there we go. Batch is heating up. So I'll let that thing run on its own. And now we'll check back in from time to time so you can hear it. Uh, we'll check, we'll ch I'll check back in to, uh, after a little while and kind of give you an update on what's going on. It's going to take a little while for this to heat up. And then, um, oh, I... Again, it's not a, this is not a video about the still. This is a video about the product. And uh, we've got, can't wait to get this sweet potato vodka done. I just want to give you a quick update. Uh, because everybody doesn't have a G-Still. Uh, these things are pretty amazing. Uh, they're very expensive, but they're pretty amazing because it's fully automated. But what I can explain by demonstration here is what takes place in no matter what type of a still you have, no matter what design, it's all... The principle is all the same. Right now, I know that my column top temperature is 81 degrees. I know my output is 81 degrees. Uh, of course, I don't have any output yet. Uh, my batch temperature in the kettle is 178. Okay. Again, it's the tachometer, remember? Um, my stabilization temperature right now is 82. That's just a given right now. It, it, it doesn't... It, that doesn't matter yet. Uh, but my the bottom of my column is only 146.6. So what does that tell me? Um, and this is after about 26 minutes or so of heat up. That tells me that my kettle is right now hotter than my column. So what am I waiting on? Yes, the system does this on its own, but I'm waiting for it to balance. It'll do it by itself, but we need the kettle temperature and the column temperature to almost equalize. And that's what's taking place. So I know that my column temperature is low, but the bottom of my column is in the mid, and my kettle temperature is really high. It kind of lends itself to that. Remember that analogy we used before about tracking kettle temperature? Um, we do it here to use it as a comparison. But if that was the only temperature we were tracking, it really doesn't tell you anything. It's like driving a car using the tachometer. Uh, that's, uh, we're running really well right now. And I just wanted to show you this. Uh, you can see my, my column top temperature is still 90. Uh, here's my output, 171. And my stabilization temperature is 172. This stays within about a degree of each other. And this is our target azeotrope and that's uh, 190.7 uh, we'll leave azeotrope for another video uh, but this is amazing here my bottom temperature is 199 um, I've got one kilopascal pressure in the tank and we're running on 2.8 kilowatts this is just simply amazing I'm gonna let her run yeah I actually pulled this off just to show you and I'm right now measuring off 192 proof which is somewhere near about let me roll it over here yeah almost 96 percent alcohol and that's the first run of this so oh it, um, we don't have smell of vision um, a really really rich good sweet potato vodka you know one of the questions that we always get about well, how much head, four shots and heads should I have? Well, you know, we always talked about your four shots are the first two ounces of every five gallons. So we're looking at about four ounces. Now, this is scientifically, this is what this automated system has pumped out as heads. And after the heads comes what? The hearts. So um, you, um, you run, run your system the way you like to run it and, uh, you know, your technique the way you run it. But... I, uh, you know, I'm a science kind of a geek, you know, you know, I track all the temperatures and pressures. I mean, all that stuff. Um, this is the heads out of 13 gallons. Uh, food for thought. All good things have to come to an end. But you know, the, the important part of this is 
a successful end. I'm sitting here at still 192 proof, or better known as 90%, 96% uh, alcohol by volume of my sweet potato vodka. Now, uh, I did, I wound up with, and this is because the still actually shut itself off uh, at the end of the run. Remember, because I did, so I selected do not collect tails. Um, so I wound up with two and all shy of three quarts. So this is probably two, 2.65, 2.7 quarts. And uh, if I do my math quickly, uh, right off the top of my head, I'm like, uh, that's a little bit under 8% alcohol by volume, which is, remember, this is exactly what we measured at the very beginning. So I knew I could anticipate what I would draw. Um, anything more than that would have meant that uh, my measurements in the beginning were off. So things will track themselves all the way through. Now, I guess here, here goes the big question. Well, George, what's it taste like? Uh, let me tell you what I've, I've tasted it. Um, uh, and of course, I'm partial. Yes, it's mine. I did it. Uh, it's re very, very crisp, very clear, very neutral. And because you know what it's made of, um, I'm going to blame it on that. I, I get this slight aftertaste sweetness on the back of my throat. Um, but I'm very, very impressed with it. And this is probably one of those recipes that I will definitely do again. Now, uh, you know, a lot of times we'll do one, or you may do one, and you're like, okay, that's good, but, you know, all right, time to move on and do something else. Um, and every once in a while, you fall upon a recipe, you're like, ah, that's pretty, I think I'll do that one again. Um, this is definitely one that I will do again. Sweet potato vodka from start to finish, and you have been with us the whole way. And for those of you who stuck with us, thanks so much for your support. You know, we are less than 100 subscribers away from... 100,000. Go figure. Um, a long way uh, in a short period of time. And I'm, I'm extremely excited and extremely thankful for every one of you. So if you haven't had the chance or the opportunity yet, please subscribe, share us with your friends, comment below, and of course, happy distilling.